I'm delighted to welcome you to the ribbon cutting ceremony of the first protected intersection in the mid Atlantic region connecting cycle tracks in downtown Silver Spring. Providing high quality transportation options for our residents to enhance biking, walking, and transit benefits everyone in our community, giving people more ways to get around means that there is less reliance on single occupancy vehicle, and this benefits all travelers, including the drivers. That's better for our economy, our environment, our community, and a sustainable Montgomery County. When MCDOT adapts uh, our right of way to accommodate all users, we are doing so with an eye toward our Vision Zero goal of eliminating traffic-related fatalities. And when it comes to biking, we know that separated bike lanes improve safety and makes biking better for everyone, for all level of skill level and all ages. MCDOT is an innovator. In 2014, Montgomery County became the first suburban jurisdiction in the country that built a separated bike lane. And we are now again the first jurisdiction in the mid-Atlantic region to build a protected intersection. I'm so proud of, of thank you. I'm so proud of the creativity shown by MCDOT staff. I especially want to recognize Matt Johnson, who actually oversaw this project, and the entire team from the Department of Transportation, Division of Engineering, uh, Division of Traffic Manage Traffic Engineering and Operation, Division of Transit. They all work together to deliver this project. A main feature of this intersection is the corner islands that forces drivers to slow down when they are turning and providing improved visibility. The islands also reduces the crossing distance from one side of the street to the other. This intersection is a part of a larger project that opens today. A new half a mile cycle tracks on this side of the road that uh, connects the previously connected sections to the form a 1.4 mile uh, bikeway that connects directly to the Silver Spring Transit Center. The project also includes Maryland first dedicated bicycle traffic signals. I'd love to have one. <laughs> that will let the cyclists know there will be no vehicle crossing their path. Another project feature is the three floating bus stop in which buses pick up and discharge riders in area <coughs> separated from the road main roadway. The staff are already busy working on creating future protected intersections at Bethesda and Woodmont Avenue in Bethesda and Cameron and Fenton in, uh, Street in Silver Spring. I want to take a moment uh, to recognize everyone in MCDOT for their outstanding commitment to our vision, a vision we created during the uh, uh, first year as, year as director. Our vision is to create a seamless transportation system for all people of all ages, income and ability that approaches a vibrant and sustainable community. We have the best team in the county, a group of truly dedicated professionals who do their utmost to serve the public every day. They have overcome every obstacle to change the culture and thinking of our department and truly bring us into the 21st century. I could not be prouder of them and their accomplishment. And I could not be prouder of having been a part of this organization for more than 30 years. It is now my pleasure to introduce our county executive, Mark Erwich, who actually is a strong advocate for pedestrian and bicycle safety and mobility. And without his support, this project would not happen. I first got involved in pedestrian safety issues when we were redoing Silver Spring, what seems like decades ago. But uh, the big question then was, how much time does it take for a person to cross 
the street. And the big concern was that our timeline, the timelines did not allow a person to get across the street in a light cycle and that they were expected to somehow run across the street regardless of age or disability. And the whole purpose for everything was to maximize car flow. So it's nice to see that we've traveled a bit from thinking that the movement of automobiles is the most important thing through intersections and realizing that the movement of people through all various modes of transportation is important in an intersection. And this, this one here is pretty cool. I will bring my bike up here and try it. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I've, um, <clears throat> I've taken the leap into a semi-electrified bike and so I can pedal, but if I need assistance, I can ask for it for assistance. Um, and it's pretty fun. Uh, this has uh, been a remarkable job. I want to thank Al and his team for the work they did to make this happen. Um, I was by here a few weeks ago at a meeting at Easter Seals and kind of looking at it take shape and now you can see everything that was intended with it. And it's it's pretty nice project. Uh, there are only three dozen of these in the United States. Um, we're going to look at other locations as has been said up in Bethesda. There are places where we can certainly put this in and create the loops that, that we've talked about creating. So I'm looking forward to seeing the planning for everything else that we can do. And I just want to, you know, thank everybody for their patience in getting this project done. Um, and the other thing is you can have the first digital bike meter, which is kind of cool. I saw that, I saw one of those down at, uh, what is it, down by the Anthem the other day, and they were keeping track of all the bikes that had ridden by. And I'm also excited about signals. I was in Berlin this summer, and they had bicycle signals everywhere, and it really was a help, I think, to everybody trying to navigate the streets to know who who's supposed to be going and when they're supposed to be going. So I think bike signals will be another thing that hopefully we see more of in Montgomery County. Even when you don't have tracks, they're useful to helping people understand what to do. So I want to thank everybody for being part of this. And I think I'm turning it over to, are you next? Is it Hans or is it Tom? Tom. Um, so come on up. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Beautiful morning for this. The good news, I don't, I don't have any prepared remarks, but I really want to thank um, the planning department, Chairman Anderson. I really want to thank uh, uh, County Executive Elrich and Director Rothby and, uh, and Chris and Emil and everybody at DOT for their vision of transforming Montgomery County so it really works for everybody and not just drivers. Um, that's really critical to our future. Um, I'm lucky enough to chair our uh, Transportation Environment Committee. Um, we completely share, we have two thirds of the committee right here with uh, my colleague Hans Riemer. And I can tell you, uh, speaking for Hans too, we share this vision and we have for a long time. We've been in the bicycle and pedestrian advocacy space for a long time. And I know we will hear from many people who are excited about this. And then we'll also go to some community meetings and people will say, "Why? Did, how do you possibly screw up this intersection? I'm so confused. And I just wanna say, when we go to, when we are dealing with the public uh, very often as elected officials, I think we deal with a lot of people who think the environment that we live in now, the built environment, was sort of handed down on stone tablets um, by people that did everything perfectly and uh, envisioned no, no change ever. And that couldn't be farther from the truth, right? The built environment we see all around us was built largely 100 years ago. And Casey lives a block from here. And how, what's your house? 1892. 1892. Everything around here, most of it was laid out a hundred years ago by people who, A, they were fallible, and B, you know, having the information they had now, they could have never imagined the traffic we have, the density of population we have, the need for pedestrian safety and bike safety, because every trip was safe back then, um, and the need to get people to a metro that had not yet been built, and certainly they never imagined climate change and the imperative that we're dealing with to change the way we look at our society. We need to re-envision not just our intersections, but our neighborhoods and our economy and all of our built environment and our lives and how we get around. And that starts right here. And people I know will say, well, this is just one intersection and you have 507 square miles and hundreds of intersections. If you look at the um, bicycle pedestrian, the bicycle master plan that the planning board has passed and the council has approved and the pedestrian master plan as well, you will get a sense of the vision and the ambition we have to transform Montgomery County. 
so it is safe for everybody and every mode of transportation at all times. And it's, so it's responsive to a new world where climate has to be in the forefront of all our decision making. So thank you for getting us here. I'm really looking forward to working with all of you and everybody that you know for the next intersection improvement along these lines. Thank you. All right, well, I think if you're here today, then you had a hand in this one way or another, whether through your work at the departments or your community advocacy. So I wanna say thank you to each of you because this right here is the culmination of a lot of work for a lot of years to try to turn the tide in this county, change direction and make this county become modern and embracing all forms of transportation. And the fact that we now have a absolute national model of safety infrastructure is just a testament to so many people working together for so long. I recall sitting down with Casey and Dave Ansbacher maybe five years ago to talk about what could we do if we were to pull out an advanced implementation of the bikeways master plan and just apply it to Silver Spring. And that's how the idea of a bike loop came up. This intersection is a critical part of an overall vision of Silver Spring, making Silver Spring a model for a walkable, bikeable, safe place to drive, safe place to move about. And we're almost done. That, that whole network does have another key piece, which is Fenton. And that is in the budget. And we need to follow through with this brilliant vision and bring it to the rest of Silver Spring. Because what we learned when we were doing the plan process for this is that the vision of this network is that wherever you are in Silver Spring or surrounding it, you can get anywhere else in Silver Spring in a safe, protected manner. And so you can jump into the loop and take that loop somewhere into Silver Spring. So all the surrounding neighborhoods, everyone who lives here, we calculated that 90% of the people who live in this area will be able to get where they want to go in Silver Spring in a safe, low stress environment. So there is actually a data driven analysis underneath this. And uh, we, we've got to follow through. I really want to thank the chair of the Transportation Committee, Tom Hucker. Uh, he's been steadfast in his support here. And I want to recognize, of course, the previous chair, Roger Berliner, previous county executive, Ike Leggett, all of us have been working towards this goal. I think it's important to remember that this is not just for bikes. The benefit here is for everyone, pedestrians, this is a much safer intersection to cross. Bikers, this is a much safer way to get across town. Drivers, this is a much calmer, more relaxing, it's going to be better for your life to drive through intersections that are built for safety than to constantly be ripping about, about to hit somebody. It takes a little getting used to. I know, I heard from my mother-in-law who lives, lives off of Spring Street. It takes some getting used to. But as Tom Hucker said, the way that the roads are today is not handed down on a stone tablet. We need to actually configure them to be safe. The last thing I wanna say, this is about a vision of economic competitiveness. Communities all across the country that are at the cutting edge that are driving economic progress are also making these kinds of changes to build communities that are great places to live where you don't have to drive. You can drive, but you don't have to. So we are seeking to be also at the forefront of that. Make downtown Silver Spring a real model for us and a place where companies want to come. So this, this bike lane is more, even about more than mobility. It's about economic competition and the thriving succeeding county that we all want to have. Thank you very much, appreciate your support, and let's keep working on this together. Well, I hope you'll indulge me because this is the last time I'll get to say, to say this in public. Uh, I'm really gonna miss Al Rashti as head of the Department of Transportation. Yeah. He's been a fantastic director. Al, I, I, your friendship, your support, uh, your collaboration has just meant so much to me and I think it's meant so much to this community and we really all owe you a great deal. But we're glad you're not riding off into the sunset, you're on to a new adventure. Uh, will there still be time for some cigars, I think. <laughs> I hope. Um, on a little bit uh, less um, uh, happy note, I have to say I've been to uh, three uh, memorial walks and rides for people who've been killed walking or riding their bike 
in Montgomery County in the last month. And um, my son rides his bike to and from school. He's at college in, in the city. Came home this weekend, rode his, rode his bike home. I want him to get home safely. And I think we all have somebody that we care about, even if we don't ride a bike, even for one of those drivers that gets a little bit annoyed. Right, Tom? Some of those constituents, you might remind them. All of us have somebody that we care about, whether it's uh, a spouse or, a, or a, a son or daughter, or whether it's us who's trying to just get uh, to and from where we want to go um, on bike or on foot. And I'm so glad to be here at this ribbon cutting instead of a memorial ride or walk to put in a ghost bike or to memorialize somebody who's died. And Mr. County Executive, I really appreciate your commitment to this. I didn't know whether you would follow through on what your predecessor did, but that really means a lot. And, well, and I think it's fantastic to see that you have the courage to move this forward in the face of sometimes there is, in fact, opposition. But I hope we'll be at a lot more of these ribbon cuttings so we don't have to go to any more ghost bike installation. I think we can all agree. And it's not just in Silver Spring, it's in Glenmont, it's in White Oak, it's in Bethesda, it's in Aspen Hill, it's all over the county. We're planning to make this a better place. And as Tom said, this it didn't happen overnight. We didn't get here in just a, a few months or a few years. It happened over decades. We don't really have time to wait that, that kind of generational length of, to, to make it better. We have to transform this place. And I know that with people standing behind me working to execute on the great plans that our staff at Montgomery Planning has, has produced, we can do this and, and hopefully never have to go to another one of those memorials. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm really happy to see uh, all of you, especially those of you who biked here. Um, my name's Peter Gray. I'm a board member for the Washington Area Bicyclists Association. I really appreciate the fact that our county executive is here today, showing his support for this plan, that two members of the t and &E committee are here today, showing their support for the, this plan. I know that all of the DOT people that I see in the crowd have been pushing towards this accomplishment for quite a long time. I also want to uh, echo what, uh, what Hans said in terms of, we do have another really important spoke of the Silver Spring Circle to uh, put in on Fenton Street. And I'm hoping that the, uh, the plans will, will go forward. We'll have a meeting uh, later this year to test this out with the community and that we will see support for yet another really important way for people to get to the library, to the bus station, to the to the uh, Montgomery College, all these things that Fenton Street can supply. I also want to say that this would not have happened with the hundreds of supporters in the advocacy community, people, residents like myself uh, of the Silver Spring area who have pushed for this to happen. Nothing happens without a fight. We realize that, that, that some people don't like change, and uh, for all the good reasons, we're, I'm glad to see that we have been able to make this effort, and I encourage all of you who, who like what's happening today to continue to help us push for Fenton Street, to push for all the great things that are gonna happen in downtown Bethesda, and then in Wheaton, and Langley Park, and all different areas of the county where we can get places built so that there will be a network of safe, protected lanes for bicyclists to, to be on. The only other thing I want to say is that uh, we are going to have a, a, a sort of a community celebration ride uh, of, this, uh, of these lanes and this intersection on October 20th, Sunday morning. I think we're going to meet over at the... Uh, former Discovery Building and, and gather there and then take a ride uh, around these lanes and see how great they are. And I hope that all of you can come uh, Sunday the 20th. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, Roberto Rodriguez, uh, director of the Silver Spring Regional Area. And on behalf of the Silver Spring community, really, um, bienvenidos to the center of the universe, and that is Silver Spring. And thank you, County Executive. Thank you. County Council and thank you Al 
for, for the amazing leadership to make this possible. I will say this, as an avid, avid walker, this is transformative. The, the idea of being, and, and I really challenge us all, when we go back, take a fresh look at that Google map, put downtown Silver Spring in the middle, and see how ridiculously close it is to walk and bike to uh, Littonsville, Long Branch, Four Corners, a, a Shepherd's Park in D.C., a, a, the old Walter Reed's development in D.C. If you look, take a fresh look at the map and see that south of the Beltway, and you impose, you put the purple line in there, everyone south of the Beltway in Silver Spring will be within an easy walking distance, about 22 minutes, healthy walking distance of a Purple Line station or a bike ride of six, eight minutes away. This is truly transformative. So downtown Silver Spring itself is 400 acres, as big as both Bethesda and Wheaton put together. So it is really indispensable for it to be a walkable area as it is becoming. And for people to feel not only that you can do it, but that it is safe to do it. And I, I think we're trying to, to, to do it by living it. Um, we, uh, some of us that are committed to walking and many of you that are committed to, to, to biking, we really wanna get out there and show folks that it is infinitely healthier, easier, cheaper, and simply better. If you live within a mile and a half to two miles, just for crying out loud, if you're able, walk, get on that bike, and do come to the brewery, come to the, come to the plaza, come to the activities, and it's so much healthier to then at the end of that to simply walk back, bike back home. So this whole deal of having this circular piece around downtown Silver Spring, it really is, look at it fresh on the map and you see the beauty of it. And last but not least, I do wanna say this regarding biking and walking, that it does help us experience what's around us in a way that simply riding in a vehicle can't. So this is really transformative, not only for us physically, but also for us as individuals. So again, thank you, and I'm glad that we're all enjoying this. Thank you, guys. Okay, now we're gonna cut the ribbon. For photo reasons, look up at the photographer. Give them all a fair shot. On three. One, two, three. <laughs> okay.